In this video, we explain how to use the Van Hoff for differential method to obtain the rate law for a reaction having the reagents A and B. Okay, so this is the reaction, and what we're trying to obtain here is the rate law, which in other words means uh, obtaining the reaction orders X and Y and the rate constant K. Now, in a prior video, we actually have uh, uh, solved this problem by using something that is called the isolation method. But a pitfall of what we uh, did at that point is that to obtain the uh, reaction order with respect to the reagents A and B, we just did two experiments, a reference and just one more experiment to determine how uh, the concentration affects rate. Now, if there's any error in that experiment, in, th in those two experiments, then uh, our orders and rate constant will actually be highly affected by those errors. So, uh, using the Van Hoff for the differential method, we can actually uh, devise a way uh, so that the errors can actually be tolerated because instead of doing only two experiments, we're actually going to be doing a set of experiments for uh, each reagent. Okay, so for example, suppose that we actually have here uh, a grid of experiments in which we're going to be determining the initial rate. Okay, so all of these would be uh, with initial concentrations and initial rate because that gives you more accurate results. Okay, and suppose that we uh, do this experiment with one millimolar uh, of A, then maybe three millimolar, then maybe uh, five millimolar, and then 10 millimolar or so. And then uh, uh, we also have to choose a concentration of B. Okay, so the idea here would be to actually uh, measure these rates, and this can be uh, anything that we would. Okay, uh, um, for the purpose of this problem, we're just gonna make up these numbers. I'm actually gonna write here X's using black marker. Okay, in this experiment, what we're actually doing is we're holding fix the concentration of B at say one millimolar, and then we're simply varying the concentration of A. Okay, so what that's going to let us uh, figure out is what the reaction order is with respect to uh, A, okay? Now, if we want to f figure out what the reaction order is with respect to uh, B, what we can do, and you will see how this is done a little bit later on, is to actually repeat this set of experiments but with varying concentrations of B. Okay, so we can run here an experiment in which the concentration of B uh, is uh, three millimolar, for example, and another experiment in which the concentration of B will be maybe 10 millimolar or so. All right, so this second set of experiments, I'm going to denote them with a uh, red line. Uh, and then the last set of experiments uh, are going to be a green line. All right, so the question then is, uh, how do we obtain the two reaction orders and the rate constants from this grid of experiments? All right, so uh, much as what we've done uh, with, uh, before, uh, we use the differential or Van Hoff method which consists on taking logarithms of this expression to see if we can linearize it, to see if we can actually find a linear representation. Let's take the, this first of, of experiments and see what we can uh, what we can take on. Okay, so notice that uh, what happens there is the following. The rate, the initial rate, V0 is gonna be equal to K, concentration of A at time zero to the X, concentration of B at time zero to the Y. Notice that in this set of experiments, the concentration of B is constant. Okay, so all of this term is actually going to be a constant. What we can do is group that together with the rate constant to produce something that is called K prime, all right? Uh, multiplied by the concentration of A zero to X, where this K prime is simply the product of the rate constant and then uh, the concentration of B to the Y. This is something similar to what we did when we were explaining the pseudo order, okay? And again, this happens if you hold fix the concentration of B. Now you can take logarithms of this and find out that this gives you a very nice linear representation. Logarithm of K prime plus X, uh, logarithm of the concentration of A at time zero, okay? Which is very similar to what we actually have obtained when we're examining the Van Hoff method with just one reagent, right? So if we try to plot that, it would be something like this. Uh, you plot the logarithm of the concentration of A at time zero in the x-axis, and then the logarithm of the initial rate in the y-axis, and then you will have uh, 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 to uh, uh, draw those those uh, numbers, okay? And uh, they might be aligned like this, okay? And if that's the case, and you can draw a linear, uh, you can fit this with a linear representation. Okay, and now it is that uh, the slope of that line is going to be equal to uh, the reaction order that you're looking for. Okay, the slope is equal to x, and then uh, 
the inner step with the x axis, this is going to be equal to the logarithm of k prime. Okay, we'll remember that k prime, we can put it right here, k prime in this case is equal to k times uh, the concentration of v at time zero to the y. Okay? All right, so using this uh, for experiments, we've already been able to determine what the reaction order is with respect to A. Okay, however, we have still two unknown variables. We still don't know what this uh, reaction order with respect to Y is, and we don't know what the rate constant is. Notice that uh, both uh, the reaction order with respect to B and the rate constant are folded into this K prime, like this. And so far, in this field, we actually obtain only one value of K prime, uh, we only have one value of k prime, which means that we actually have two unknowns, and that's an equation that you cannot solve. Right? So to be able to figure out this k and this y, we at least need another set of measurements. Okay? And for that, we can actually take here uh, the second uh, uh, set of experiments in which we vary the concentration of the node. Okay, so the idea is then uh, to do exactly the same thing. Uh, uh, we're going to rip, uh, repeat all of this process, okay, but now my k prime will be different, okay, because I'm changing the concentration of V naught. This is no longer one millimolar, which is what I had before, but now I'm moving to three millimolar. Okay, uh, the slope of the line is going to be exactly the same. This is still the uh, reaction order with respect to A, okay, which means that you're going to obtain a line parallel to this one, okay, where the slope is still x, that doesn't change, okay, and the intercept with this axis is now log k prime. And these log k primes are different, again, because uh, k prime is different. The k doesn't change, the y doesn't change, those are the two unknowns that we have. But the initial concentration of B has changed. Notice that we've moved from 1 millimolar to 3 millimolar. Okay, so in this case, now we have two values of k prime, and we have two unknowns. In principle, we could set up a, set, uh, a system of two equations with two unknowns, and then uh, uh, solve those unknowns. But if we actually do a, a third set of experiments, instead of uh, solving these two unknowns with the two equations, we can actually uh, do a linear fit, which is going to uh, be very helpful with the error as well. Okay, so that third set of experiments is going to be this one, in which we again will repeat all of this. Okay, the concentration of B uh, is fixed now at 10 millimolar, so that is a constant. We can fold it with K into this K prime, and then still obtain that representation. And again, notice that uh, this is not going to change. That's the slope with respect to uh, A. And the K prime will change because we're changing the uh, initial concentration of B. Right, so representing that, we're going to get a graph that looks like this. Okay, it's a parallel line to the one that I had, the ones that I had, because again, the slope doesn't change. This is still uh, the reaction order with respect to uh, A. All right, and what will be different is this log of K prime. Okay, and again, it's different because we're changing the concentration of B naught. Now the question is, now I have three values of K prime or log of K prime. How do we actually determine those uh, values of uh, K and Y, which are what I'm missing here? Well, so this is actually not difficult. What you can do is then take this expression and then uh, apply logarithms to obtain a linear representation. All right, so uh, we can take this and say, well, if we apply based on logarithms, okay, you will obtain that this is equal to log k prime is equal to log of k plus y times log of the concentration of b at time zero. All right, and this is the equation of a straight line. If you plot this in the y-axis, uh, that will be your intercept, and y will be the uh, slope of that line. Okay, so what you're plotting in this graph it will be the log of k prime versus log of the concentration of B at time zero. Okay, the log of k prime, they all come from these intercepts that you have from those three fits. And then the log of B zero, these initial concentrations are one millimolar, three millimolar, and ten millimolar in our example. Okay, so you have those three points, which look, you can then try to fit. That will be one, two, and three points. Okay, you can fit with a straight line. And uh, the slope and the intercept of that line are going to give you your other two unknowns. Okay? Uh, the slope, in this case, is going to be uh, y, which is the order of the reaction with respect to b. And the intercept with this axis is going to be your log 
of the rate constant, okay, from which you can obtain the rate constant. All right, so uh, that is uh, how the Van Hoff and the or differential method works for a reaction with two reagents. Uh, now we can determine the bo both uh, the reaction orders, which stick to the, with the two reagents, and the rate constant, doing a series of linear fits. Okay, but this is a very clever way uh, because uh, uh, it actually tolerates error. For example, if you have that uh, there's an experimental error in that point, and uh, you measure it to be like this. Okay, notice that if you take only those two experiments, the order that you will get uh, would actually be in error. However, if you make more experiments, eventually you have a sufficient number of experiments, that experimental error will be washed out, and you will obtain a much, uh, a much more legitimate uh, reaction order, and the intercept will also be much, also much more accurate as well. Okay, so uh, this is the last uh, method to determine the reaction rate that we're going to see. It's the more, more complex, but it's also the more accurate and it's perhaps the most useful because uh, it allows you to obtain, uh, to look at reactions with two reagents which are very common.